Good evening, hepcats and cool birds, and welcome to another terrifying chapter of Blood from a Stone, a Tale of Love and Dread in RPG. I am Philip, and I am your Dreadmaster, and with me tonight is one player who is, as far as I'm concerned, worth worth a whole team of them. <laughs> Hello, Lauren. How are you doing tonight? Hello. Oh, I'm so sorry. I guess I should. I, it feels it feels weird to prompt a single person, but say good evening, Lauren. Good evening, Lauren. There you go. And Philip. That's the, and, that's the... and friends and family. I guess the, I guess the origin of it is say good night, Gracie, and then she would say good night, Gracie. So yeah, I guess you can't do it with one person. Oh. Sorry, um, I coughed. By the way. You're fine. We all, everybody coughs here and there. Um, welcome, everyone. So um, tonight, tonight is a uh, is a solo game, as you can tell. This is a little bit because of scheduling and a little bit by design. Um, we had a few people missing, and then other people were like, "Well, yeah, you, I can I can have a night off if we're gonna if we're gonna do this." Because uh, as it as it did, as things did progress last week, we ended with with Miss Medina in an interesting situation. Um, so I think that is. I think that is basically what's what's going on here. Uh, in in previous uh, in previous chapters, Medina Lake has been here at at Holdfast Hall at Darkmoor College, where unlike its unlike its analog in the real world, they are not breaking for the summer. Um, although she's only been here a few days, and months have passed for them, so you know it's it's all it's all kind of hazy. The point being that Medina. Um, encountered someone last week who, while she's not attracted to him yet, she <laughs> has forged a certain um, I think she sees some mutual benefit to their cooperation between Medina and the Soldier of Fortune. The Soldier of Fortune uh, 
has indicated that he is very intrigued by by meeting someone from where she is from and she is very interested in what he can he can tell her as it seems he may have he may have more information than Rawlings ever did and or as he pointed out then a I mean, Rawlings was only a copy of someone, and the Rawlings she could bring here would just be a different copy from a different written perspective. So, you know, it is... It's hard for the brain to comprehend. You need a real man, is the point. Oh, God. And there is no man more real and more mustachioed <laughs> than everyone's favorite. Mist Walker. SOF. The Soldier of Fortune. So, um, Medina... Yes. Upon striking this deal with him, um, she she was instructed that a an album, something that she knows as the name of this whole sort of world or setting blood from a stone, is an album that she'd previously learned was held in the rare collections of Holdfast Hall. Professor Charles authorized her to go up. The Soldier of Fortune asked you for information about this. Do you do you remember what it is or should I should I refresh your memory as well as, as I do, but go ahead and say it. <laughs> <laughs> I do. Well, why I don't you say it then? Because otherwise I'm no, just talking. Because, because I'm not gonna say it the right way and I'll get flustered. Oh, okay. Um there is a woman who was involved with the creation of that work. He wants to know, he wants to know her name, he wants to know about her. He's interested in her. Apparently she participated in the creation of this now mythic album, Blood from a Stone. So Medina went back and Professor Charles left her in the room. He, he came, he unlocked the room with both magic and keys. He opened a little box, also with magic and keys. He brought out a box, unlocked that box with magic and keys, and then he pieced out, and you heard locks turn, like, sealing behind you. So Medina is sealed in a room. She opened the box, found the album. She pulled out the liner notes. She took great care not to read the lyrics, but she did spot a photo. Woman in hoop earrings, very groovy 70s clothes, just, you know, just an absolute baby boomer's dream you know <laughs> um, and uh, but the, ca- the photo did not have captions so she didn't learn the name but then she heard a name and she felt pretty strongly this was the name she heard the name Wendy Wendy she started talking in her own voice she sounded husky and kind of you know coke fueled cigarette addled all those beautiful 70s vibes um she was explaining how she isn't in love, but he should use it in his writing. And the voice in reply said, you're turning my heart to stone. Medina closed her eyes, overwhelmed by this experience, but then she heard a muffled, like, bass guitar. She opened her eyes and found herself in, like, a small bathroom with wood paneling, clearly from the 70s. She can hear drums beating. She sees that woman's face staring back at her from the mirror, moving as she moves. Grimy, grimy little mirror. That, you know, I mean, like, like, and there's, this is like, just so much coke has been done in this bathroom. That's the main, that's the main takeaway. But somebody is pounding on the door saying, Wendy, we're ready. And that is where we left off. So how are you feeling, Lauren? Are you ready for what Totally super. This, this yeah. will be, this will be your third solo session the first was wait is this your third or is this only your second I think it's my third but my first not Sarah Quill you've done two Sarah Quill I have you did the spooky Sarah Quill one and then you did the sexy Sarah Quill one the yeah I, both were spooky but like spooky is sexy so maybe they were both a little sexy <laughs> hashtag spooky is sexy Okay. Um, but you then. So now we have the first of someone else, Medina Lake, a solo session. So, with that in mind, I'm now going to read to you the invocation. 
for chapter 96 of Blood from a Stone, A Tale of Love and Dread, in RPG. You burned my house down to ashes, left my bike on the tracks in the path of a burning train. And I'd let you do it all again for a little more of the same. Because when I watch you from the shadows as you sharpen your knives, your silhouette has got me feeling so brave. I'll keep coming for you no matter how bad it hurts how bad it hurts, and while I'm digging your body, you're digging my grave. Hey, Wendy! Uh, I... Sorry, give me a second. Yeah. Uh, can I... Can I, like, check pockets and stuff, and... Ooh. Yes, um, you can check your pockets. Oh, wow, what a obvious thing that you would do that I did not think of. There also is a purse in here. There is one purse in the room. I'm, I'm looking in everything I can. Um, in pockets, you, you find a little bit, like, you have, you know, like, you've got a vest on or something. There, you, you probably find, like, a bit of cash here or there, you know, um, there's maybe a, a, a coin or a, a bill, whatever. Mm -hmm. Um, in your purse, you do find a set of keys with a big, like, fuzzy key ring thing on it. Mm -hmm. Um, you don't see a car key on it. It looks like, like, apartment keys or something like that. Um, you find, I, you, you may not know either. You find whatever the feminine products of the 70s would have been. Probably not as you, you know, it's probably like a, you know, I don't think it's yeah. like it's not the it's not the dark ages, but it's like you don't have there's no R there's no Tampax Pearl tampons. back then. Um, <laughs> I didn't know about those. I've been sent to purchase many. I've been sent explicitly for don't come back here without Tampax Pearl. Those are no. top of the line. That's the, uh, by the way, everybody. Blood from a Stone, Chapter ninety six, presented by Tampax. Uh, when you're running from a dread storm, you, you don't want to be worried about least. Um, so, in any case, um, you find that there is, uh, you also find uh, makeup. Okay. Um, a good deal of makeup. Um, you find, uh, the, the purse is very haphazard. Um, there is a harmonica. Okay. And um, there is a, uh, Honestly, with some of your own things you have, you under you recognize a switchblade knife. Mm-hmm. Um, and there is also a small vial of uh, white powder. And a pack of cigarettes and a lighter. Okay. There is a wallet as well, and uh, I suppose if you were to look at the wallet, there is a driver's license with your photo on it. Um... It well, is. I'm not not Medina, right? Not but Medina. This this, this this face you see in the in the in the mirror. Um, okay. The name is uh, is Raven Wendy. Uh huh. Um, date of birth. Maybe like probably like fifty six. Okay. Paradise. Oh, okay. Okay. <gasps> Um, so I'll just look in the mirror and like, like re collaborate myself and, um, gather all of the stuff into the purse and open the door. Okay. Um, there's a sort of wood paneled hallway. Whoever was banging on the door seems to have moved aside, but you hear like there is music playing from some room and, uh, you hear somebody saying, uh, like, how are the tenors, Johnny? And, uh, you hear another voice going, I'm not even sure. I, I, let's, uh, let's try the, here, can, can, play that again. And you hear kind of like, and then some guitars are, vroom, 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 vroom. um, there is, the hallway seems to lead towards a door. Um, you, this, this, this bathroom seems to be like at the, at like a little L on the end of a hallway. 
Mm -hmm. Um, The hallway leads down towards what you are assuming is either a stage or a recording studio. Based on you are seeing this person in this thing, you're maybe assuming it's a recording studio. There are also a lot of records on the walls. Um, Okay. And, but there is another door that seems to be like a, like a back door. It is propped open. It looks like it's night outside. And there's a little bit of like, like harsh, like halogen lamp coming into the, this, this hallway is very moody and dim, you know, very much like the picture behind us. Um, Mm -hmm. At the end of the hall though, there is a, uh, it's like a much like starker halogen glow coming in. It looks like maybe there's like a shadow. Someone is standing back there, um, sitting, standing just outside. Um, I will go to see if I can see who's standing outside, okay. but walk... not, not loudly. Under, uh, understood. You, you're trying to be sneaky. Okay. Yeah. And you know, you brought it up and I didn't do it. Um, make a sneak roll. We can say that Wendy can share your, your 3d6 coordination. I honestly might have Wendy share your physicality coordination vitality. She just might, she just might ha- not have like your specialties, you know? Wait, D6 or D8? I, D8. Don't ever t- oh, listen okay. to me. I'm a, don't, I'm just, I'm saying words and they mean nothing. I uh, did not match anything. So basically, the, there a figure sort of stirs and as you sort of come up to the door, you see someone like, like turning back. The door has been like propped open with a brick. Um, standing out back wearing a very nice suit is an incredibly handsome man. He has blonde hair. Um, he's sort of smoking. He like looks at you with this like eye, and he kind of and, and he he gives you a look that is incredibly. He definitely looks as if you have been flirting with this guy for a while. He kind of okay. he sort of like gives you this like, and he just kind of without saying anything, um, he's just like he takes out his cigarettes and is. You know, pushing one out, offering you one while he. Uh, um. Thanks. You look at me more like this. She'll grab it. He. Uh, it is, just with with such deftness, he takes that back, proffers a lighter. Uh. Thanks. Then she'll go to the light. <laughs> She she will not inhale though. She's... Are they um, are they trying to are they trying to uh, make you go too fast, Miss Raven? Um, you know ev- everything's fast in uh, paradise. <laughs> he kind of turns back and says, "It does seem to be." Don't let them um, hurry you too much, all right? Um, I think uh, you are worth waiting for, and um, there's the man putting up some money for this little project. I can tell you I am not concerned about the technicians. Yeah, um, seems like a really good setup in there um how, how how long have we have we uh been recording to lose track of time in a dark studio you know it yes especially when you do not see the light i i step out here just to feel the city the town as it were just i can feel main street here in the distance it it is more pleasant than as you say being stuck in a dark studio you know, when yeah. I was, um, when I was, well, when I was somewhere, they used to say to me, uh, at the end, why do you, why do you always love to, to stare at the sun so, why do you like to, to just bask in it? Wouldn't you rather do something? Wouldn't you rather exercise or, or fly in or, um, or, or run around or something, but for me... Fly! Um, like, like, like on a... I, I mean, I he doesn't have... No, he doesn't. Okay. Um, he does seem to almost be glowing, but you think that's just in a halogen, you know, yellow halogen salt lamp. Yeah, um, like, like, like fly, fly from where? <laughs> just around, you know, but... Mm. To answer your question, it has already been a long day, but obviously, you creative types 
wonderful performer such as yourself, he's getting real close, and <laughs> your genius composer do not keep yeah. early hours. It is, I yep. suppose, it is coming up on uh, 1.30 a.m. So oh, wow. We've been at it about seven, eight hours so far. Oh, yeah, that, you know, time time flies when when you're um, making music. <laughs> she's she's going to put the cigarette in her mouth. <laughs> you know, just try to fake it. <clears throat> um, I guess make a. Uh, I think it's probably the same. Yeah, uh, deceive and per perform are are both two. So roll two. Oh gosh. Okay. Wish me luck. Uh, nope. No match. He kind of notices that you're not puffing and saying, do you not like my cigarette? I'm, uh, you know what? I just wanted to preserve my voice. Uh, you know, after, after all of this time in the studio, um, I just didn't want to be rude by refusing a cigarette. I'm, I'm sorry. And she'll just flick it on the floor and like put it out with her foot. Mm. <clears throat> Yeah, I feel know. that your voice has a has a nice quality to it, a, uh, a raspiness that some lesser men might find impossible to resist. <laughs> uh, thank you, Th thank you, uh, Etienne. Um, I'm just, I'm, I'm gonna. You're not from here. From uh, paradise, are you? Y your accent, you know, just kind of, kind of obvious. <laughs> no, I'm not. Uh, I don't. I. I don't think you mentioned earlier when we were talking where you are from. Didn't I? I don't remember, you know, um, and she'll, like, mm -hmm. <laughs> but you know what, if you don't want to tell me, that's fine. Just, uh, <laughs> trying to keep the friendly vibe around here, so. Well, I can understand the vibe is likely decidedly less friendly within. Yeah. Well, Actually, at um, that point, Medina, you do hear some shouting from inside. You hear somebody saying, "This is, this is ridiculous. Why can't anyone just stick to?" Uh, I, I, I thought I, I want it on a. I, it matters to me if it's on a Telecaster or a Stratocaster. It matters to me. Oh my god. Okay. Um. I, I guess I better get back in there, maybe see what's going on. <laughs> I suppose so. I look forward to oh. hearing uh, your performance. <laughs> Thanks. We'll see if my voice can hold up. Like I said, mm -hmm. feeling feeling rough. Uh, but I will talk to you later, probably. And she'll like back in through the door, <laughs> and just <laughs> bye. He watches you go. He's he you. Tell you what. Give me a read person on that. Okay. Two fives. Ooh, fives. Yeah. Evaluation, I'm into it. Um, you think that he does think something was amiss with you. Now, obviously, mm -hmm. these days, yeah, you just might be altered. You might have, there might be some chemical explanation for why you're maybe acting, acting a bit off. But now, but now, oh, no. you think he's like, hmm. So anyway, you've walked in, you've, you've left the handsome, handsome blonde in a suit, and now you're standing back in this hallway, um, and there's a guy shouting about, like, the wrong guitars. Okay, um, I, I will approach quietly, but not sneakily, 
I'm just you start walking down. Um, as you sort of like round the corner and you hear that like it's coming from like one of these rooms, you see this incredibly like large guy. Kind of looks like a he looks like a, like a football offensive lineman kind of guy. He's got long hair. He's wearing like a vest over like a like a white shirt. Um, he is uh, he's currently he's uh, he's like smoking. There's a cigarette indoors because you know 70s. But he's got like a bo- got a big box of Cracker Jack. He's just like munching on Cracker Jack. Uh huh. And he kind of turns and sort of, kind of, kind of walks over to you and says, "Hey, Hi. Wendy, I don't. Uh, I just wanted to. Hey, uh, you want some Cracker Jack? I'm good, thank you. Are you? Are, are oh. we? Are, are we okay? Yeah, yeah. Uh, I just had to step outside. Oh. To, uh, my voice is feeling." Oh. Oh no. Well, I know that. I mean, I mean, you. I mean, I feel a little bad here, Wendy. I know this was. I feel a little bad about how this is working out. You know, sometimes things just don't go the way you plan, and you just gotta roll with it. Oh you my know God! What I, I, mean? I I can't. He just like he like hugs you. He's like he's like all sweaty. He's just, oh my god! Thank you. I I, I I can't tell you how bad I'm feeling about this. Yeah, no. I really, worries. Um, I know how important this was to you, and I just I feel like I mean if it's if it's now like a like if 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 it's like a if it's like a solo album now, I get that you know, and you're just featured on it. I don't want you to feel. I mean, I I just I just, I just, just want to be friends with everybody, you know. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, no, I, I, I understand that. No, no harm, no foul. <laughs> wow, you didn't, wow. What did, hey, what are you on? <laughs> you seem, whoa, you seem. I, I just had, had to uh, take a break, <laughs> powder my nose, if you know what I mean. Oh, man, but I <laughs> used, because I mean, I mean, you know, we've, I mean, in all my years, uh, <laughs> in all my years uh, doing this, I, 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 I mean, you know, we've 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 had some ups and downs, you know. I saw out that scar from where you stabbed me with a corkscrew. <laughs> I just like, <laughs> you seem a little, you seem a little, uh, uh you seem very. Uh, I've uh, been meditating. What's that word about this? You've been meditating. Oh my god. Yeah. Well, tell me about that. Hey, how would you? Uh, no, tell I, me about the meditation. That you know, sounds you great. No, you just you just zone in into a quiet space in your brain and uh, breathe and you just think about nothing and that that totally helps you chill wow out I, oh wow oh my god i'm so that's great well this is <laughs> this show's gonna i mean it's yeah it's still and i still i mean especially this song i just i, I know that i mean he's been rewriting and rewriting and did you have you seen the new lyrics uh, n- n- no. He's adding this little pre-chorus part now. There, this repeated thing. It's it's it, that you sing, but um, it's uh, it's it's. I mean, it's 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 weird. It's good. I like it, but it's weird. I mean, everything. This whole thing's weird, but I yeah, don't know. totally weird. She's just trying to throw in like '60s, '70s slang that she thinks might yeah. work. Yeah, groovy. Yeah, groovy. Uh, <laughs> yeah. He's, uh, he's, well, I'm glad the meditation's working for you, though. That's, that's really yeah. good. I'm, I'm really Sorry happy about, about that. the corkscrew. Oh, I mean, yeah, I mean, it's, it's a couple, a couple of years ago. He kind of, he shows you, like, there's like a little scar in his arm where you stabbed him with a corkscrew and it's a screaming yes. fight. Um, yeah. he's like, what were we, is that, what was, was that at Summerstock that happened or was that at, I don't know, it was one of those shows. No, it, it all, the memories just blend together. They really do. Yeah. Oh. Man. I want to play softball. Okay. Yeah. Well, um, so so uh, maybe we should wrap this up. Um, oh, well, no, it's still early. Uh, we're just kind of getting into the groove. Um, oh, I, I thought we'd been here for like... Where's Wendy? Hours. Where's Wendy? And he, and suddenly kind of whoop, at the, oh, at the d- door down there, this guy, he's got long hair. He's wearing sunglasses and a leather jacket inside. And he's just staring at Wendy, and he's like, "What? What are you? Oh man, what are? Oh, you know what? Oh no, sunglasses." I really should for this. I, I, as I, as 
I oh, think here about we go. It. With the props. Oh, man. What are you two doing talking to each other? Are you conspiring against me? Wendy. No. Why can't you a- just see the opportunity? This is for everybody. Come on. Come on, baby. You know how I feel about you. You know I'd never try to cut you out of anything. I just need you. I need you in it. Right? Come on. Yeah, you know, uh, just trying to get in the zone, man. You know, um... Well, you sound weird. What's wrong with you? I... All all of this singing and recording is, uh... Oh, man. I... Yeah, I think I think I might need to take another break. Um, we haven't. I, I I got. I expanded your part like you asked. And I'm so totally thankful for that. Well, please, can you can you, can you show me your gratitude? Somehow, come on. Uh, she'll she'll like go up and like quickly like kiss him on the cheek. Thank you. Oh. So much. Oh I, my god. It's You're dear killing me. <laughs> and uh other guys just Oh uh, what yes. kind of prize I'm gonna get today. Would you just hey, maybe cool it on the cracker jack. What do you think you're gonna find in there? There ain't no coop deville hiding at the bottom of a cracker jack box, okay? What's the best you can get? An army man? Oh, come on, man. Why you gotta... Everyone's trying to... Hey. Has that money guy said anything to you? Money guy... The money guy. The the French guy. He's paying for all this. Is he trying to sleep with you? You can tell me. No, just, uh, he's... He's excited about the project. Yeah. Oh man. Oh man. He seems thrilled with with what we've been doing and and my singing. So I I think he's going to love it what what we've done here uh, today. That's good to hear. That's so good to hear, Wendy. Yeah. If you have to sleep with him, if you want to sleep with him, I need to sleep with him. It's no, it's, I don't. I can't tell you what to do. I just, I, I just want to know that you're going to. Okay, um, I, I'm just gonna play it by, by ear. Oh man. Uh, but I'll, I'll let you know. Oh no. I will. Okay. I have. Here, come on, look at the, look at the new lyrics here. Come on. He sort of. Okay. takes you by the hand and starts leading you into like the recording studio um there are a couple of guys at a mixing board uh-huh. kind of just you know 70s dudes um one's kind of tall lankier the others uh um actually they're both pretty sort of t- they're both skinny and think one guy has like a mustache and like very like curly kind of permed hair you know mm-hmm. in that sort of 70s way um and he is wearing a um he's wearing like a like a black kind of black leather shirt like a button up shirt that's like very like shiny black leather and he kind of squeaks when he moves but he just kind of looks back and goes hey honey you okay yeah yeah just looking at the lyrics (laughs) heard heard we added some (laughs) oh yeah yeah i wouldn't know i'm just been fiddling with with the stuff. How are the tenors, Johnny? And this other guy just goes, I think, uh, I think they're all right. This guy is also wearing leather, but his is like a, like a biker jacket. Mm-hmm. And he's wearing the other guy at the board. He's, he's a uh, clean shaven, he's got a biker jacket on. He's got a small sort of squirrelier guy, but, but still, still, they're both very slender. One's kind of tall slender. The other's kind of more like squirrely. Um, and he's, uh, and he's wearing like just, you know, serious dungarees and like riding boots. You assume he's a biker, but he's... I, th- I think they're fine, just, uh... He kind of just shakes his head at you. <laughs> you, um... You assume, based on the voices, that that guy, who the other is called Johnny, was the one knocking on the door. Okay. Uh... 
so are, am I gonna get a look at those lyrics or? Yeah, yeah. Hold on, just let me um. Oh, so sorry. Yeah, just give me a moment to. Yeah, he's just like on a yellow legal pad. He has two, and he's like copying over. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Here. She'll take it. Um. There's lyrics, and then he also is kind of like, and then I'll. Uh, is it okay if I don't write out every beat of the pre-chorus? Can we just wing it for once, Wendy? Can you just we trust can, me? <clears throat> we can try for sure. Oh God! He puts a hand on your face. I. I would be so excited to try. Oh God! It's tearing me apart. He just sort of sits down on on the chair. Um, he has given you a set of lyrics. Um, I have sent these to you. Yes. Um, you don't, you are basically, you are, you are being asked to sing this. Does Medina have, have, can she do a vibe check on like, if she starts singing, if it would, actually, can she do, like start humming, like try to hum along to the words? to see if something will like click in her head since she's in this musician's body. That's a Does reasonable that question. Yeah, give me a, I like, I like detect vibe. I think that's a fun, yeah. It's a good okay. way to do it. You can spend a little power if you, if, if this matters and you want to. No, thank you. Okay. She wants to keep all her power for survival. I get it. Okay. Oh, <gasps> two threes. Two threes. Oh man, if only they'd been two fours. That would have been really But good. this is dialectic. It's true. It's reason, it's so. thought, analysis, understanding. Yet you, as you start humming the music, mm-hmm. you, um, and like hearing it, you definitely have the sense that, like, if you try to sing a note, it will be the right note. You don't have, like, the technical proficiency that this person should have, but you, uh-huh. you have her voice, so, like, and you have her ear. So if you sing, it's going to sound like her voice singing. Okay. Yeah. Um, she'll just read the lyrics. But, like, realizing that, she's just going to read the lyrics. She's going to read them out loud? Singing. No. Okay. So you read over the lyrics. They are, um, they're weird. They seem... Would you like me to read them? Uh... Yeah. If you, if, if Wendy would be reading, or if Medina would be reading them aloud right now, then yes. But if you're going to not read them aloud right now, then no, we can, yeah. Um, but as you sort of look them over, it, 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 yeah. Actually, give me an analyze. That is something you are, you're pretty darn good at. Uh, no matches. <laughs> um, you can't really make heads or tails of this song. Any any conclusions you make, you could certainly you could certainly say them or think them, but you won't it get any further. It seems very voluptuan. It seems voluptuan. Interesting. Okay. Is that that's an observation she could make? I think that's absolutely an observation that Medina would let make. Yeah, it seems it seems sort of sex obsessed or or lusty or something. Okay, fair mm-hmm. enough. Um, and meanwhile, just as you're sort of looking them over, the, uh, this guy's just pacing. <laughs> uh, you know what? I think, I think I, I, I need to look these over and really get them into my system. You, you know stalling? what I mean? You don't like them, do you? You hate them? Do you hate them? Do you think no, it's wrong? Great. I can rewrite them. No, they're, they're great. I just, you, you know, my creative process is in depth. Just got to really dig into the meaning and the feeling um, behind everything in each word. You know what I mean? I've been waiting for you to treat this seriously, Wendy. I've been 
waiting for you to treat something seriously. Ah. That's great. We're going to lay down a different track while she gets familiar with it, all right? How does that sound? Great. Come on. Super groovy. Where um, are you, B? And the, the guy eating the cracker truck's like, yeah, what? What's, come on, let's let's put on... Let's, let's do another version of a... Let's get another take of one of the other songs while she's, while she's dedicating herself. How about, uh, how about, uh, how about tear you apart at the dreams? You want to do a little of that? You know, I am, I, I, I just need another break. Oh my He's... God. Oh my, oh man. Yeah, she didn't so... need... Oh no. And the, and B's like, oh, I'm, I'm so sorry, Wednesday, uh, when, uh, Wendy, Wednesday. <laughs> I'm so sorry, Wendy. That's, oh gosh, that's, uh, sorry, this is the big guy. He's like, oh, that's. That's one that's just me now. Sorry. Oh! Oh, no, 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 no. Maybe, you're, you're... Hey, maybe we could give a reverse on it, right? No, he goes, no, I don't need it. You know what? I've been, anymore. I've been, my, my voice needs just, in fact, I shouldn't even be talking now. I'm going to go in vocal rest. That's what they call it. In choir. You, you see, uh. The, the two technician guys, like the smaller one isn't paying much attention, the taller one's kind of giving you a look like hmm, and um but uh, he, yeah, okay, and this guy's like oh yeah just rest up baby, cause when it's time to sing your part on this song I need you to go all the way tonight you to take it to the end of the line. Do you understand what I'm saying? Take it to the end of the line. You gotta go. You gotta go hard all the way tonight. Yeah, all right. I'm, I'm. Yeah, I'm gonna rest my voice because you know. <laughs> he puts his hand on his on your shoulders and just says, "I can't believe I was ever able to write a single word." Before I met you! Oh man. Oh man. Let's just tear you apart of the dreams. Come on, let's let's get a track of that down and he sort of moves over. Um go ahead, Medina. Medina will see herself out of the studio. Did you say that there were records on the wall? Mm -hmm. Okay, I'm gonna I'm gonna go back into the hall and read the records and see if, if there's anything that rings a bell or that seems familiar understood um these records appear to be um none of them seem super familiar well I, let me rephrase that none of them are recognizable all of them are familiar you know um the so for the most part it is it is not like album covers that would tell you much it is it yeah. is like like gold records you know in in yeah. things um, with little nameplates that say the, the name of the album or the song or something. You think this is, you, you suspect these are like gold records that have been recorded at this studio. Yeah. Um, are there any names or anything? Yeah, that... plenty of names. Um, these names would be... I, they're not names that have would really have significance to Medina. Um mm -hmm. You'd, for example, um, like, what's a, uh, like, like, there's an album, uh, called, um, like, Ocean Sounds by, like, by, like, the, the Surf Boys. Uh-huh. You understand? So there's, like, there's, yeah. it all feels, you, you feel stuff that... It's like in a movie, like, when things are, like, named different but similar, like, in a movie... Yes, actually, I, make an analyze on that, in fact. Oh. Two sixes. Which is geometry. That's a good one. Yeah, that's a very good one for analyze. Um, you believe mm -hmm. that, yes, these are, these all seem to be like. Actually, you know what? With geometry, space, and relativity, I'll, I'll, I'll even I'll even go this. 
This seems to be a bunch of things that sound like they would have been real bands from the 1950s and 60s, mm-hmm. but none of them are actually real. Okay. You know? Like, like, there's a thing that looks like some kind of, like, like you know, psychedelic 60s thing or, like, a Beach Boys-style thing here or there, or mm-hmm. just kind of, you know, like, 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 My Rockin' Piano, you know, by, by, by Davy James, or, you know, kind of just stuff like that, you know. The, the, it's, yes, it's all very, like in a movie, like an approximation of reality. Okay. Yeah. And... You are not sure by this analysis if that means that the Beach Boys don't exist here, but certainly the Beach Boys did not record an album in this studio, whereas it seems like maybe some of these other bands did record albums in this studio. There are also a few country western looking things, and there are icons sometimes, you know, like like some of them have like a pair of like cowboy boots next to them, others have like a guitar next to them, so it, there is clearly some different genres are, are captured here. Okay, and if I continue, like, to the front of the studio, is there, like, a desk or anything? Yeah, if you walk out there, there's a desk. There's, like, a reception area and a desk, for is sure. Is there a phone book? Um, ooh, there is a phone book. Yeah, for sure. Can I look up Darkmoor College? Uh, you can. It's, it's listed there. Okay, just for shits and giggles, mm-hmm. she's gonna try calling the number, even though it's 1.30 in the morning. Okay. Stranger things have happened. <laughs> Um, make a luck roll. Oh no! And I guess I should First. mention to all my friends and neighbors. First D thirteen of the night. We Go stand. Ahead. Oh, this is not. I won't be able to. Uh, I can't have a background because you can't see the. If I do this, it disappears. Oh, it, it shows up there. I know, but I need the freedom. You're not gonna see me with backgrounds a lot. Is what I'm trying to say. Okay. Well. But it's it's a three right. for now. That is an eight. An eight. That's pretty good luck. Yeah. Yeah. You call Darkmoor College. Bring, 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 bring. You hear a click pick up. Darkmoor College. Hi. Um, I, I was just seeing if I could schedule a call with the provost. One moment. You sit there for a while. The line sounds dead, but you haven't heard like a click or anything. And there is something about older phones, you know, mm-hmm. phones with like that rotary cord going out, you know, kind of, or the, the, the that coiled cable. It, there, the sound quality is very, um, it's much more present. You know, mm-hmm. and the and the and the handset in your hand—it's heavy, it has weight, it has presence, sort of a cool plastic pressed up against your your ear. On the desk in front of you, there's a little um, like there's a little palm tree, like a little plastic palm tree with a little plastic base that says "Beach Dreamin'." <laughs> This, uh, this, the, the lights are not really on here. There's plenty of lights like, from just general street lamps or like the, the halogen salt lamps out in the, in the, uh, in the drive or in the parking lot. So it's kind of just like a, you know, you're in, kind of, you're just like lit from like one side. So it's a lot of shadows out here, but you're, you're here with the phone and it's, it's quiet for a while. You think there's somebody standing outside, actually, as you as you look out, it's kind of, you know, since you're in a dark room, you can see through the glass, and there seems to be someone, like, across the street, just sort of standing. I think you're wearing a, like a, like a trench coat, like a brown coat, it has a hat. You would think it's a man, but it could be a woman, but there's somebody just kind of, like, standing there in the dark. And does it look like they're looking at me? Make a look roll. Let's see what you can like as you try to peer into the darkness. It's, it's not you... it's not super easy. No match. You're, you just can't tell. Ooh, 
while she's on the phone, she'll like open the drawers just to like poke around. Like not not digging in them, just The first one has um some kind of like planner book, some office supplies. Mm-hmm. Um the second has some packs of gum, a pack of cigarettes, uh, a few sets of keys, a few more office supplies. The third one has um, like another date book, um, some batteries, mm-hmm. thumbtacks, a finger. Is it like a mummy finger or is it like wet? Like, like, does it look fresh? It looks old, but not like mummified. She will gently close the drawer and continue to wait on the phone. <laughs> this is not her time. Who is she? Who is she to judge? A familiar voice engages on the phone. This is the provost. Um. Hi. I just was calling to uh, talk to you about an assignment that I, I think the school may be considering. You specifically may be considering. Dread? What is your question? Oh god! I didn't get that far! Hold on. Okay, wait. Oh... She'll say, I think you want to know how it works. And if that's not something that you want to know, it's something that I want to know, but I don't know what I'm looking for. supposed to be singing how do how do you know who I am aren't you supposed to be singing Miss Lake what am I supposed to be looking for There's a crash against the 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 glass window at the front of this place. She'll hang up the phone. Standing right up against it is this figure in a trench coat. Whatever it is, it's got a hat on it. It's kind of looking at you. This hand, this claw on the on the thing. It doesn't feel totally human. And these eyes peer out from the dark. Of it. it's now it's now silhouetted by the light coming against it. So you just sort of see this. But there's this these eyes, they don't seem human, but it's just <clears throat> glaring at you. Can I do a vibe check? <laughs> you can do a vibe check. Uh, no matches. <laughs> Just a terrifying thing looking at me. Yeah, you're you're you you don't understand anything other than that there's something threatening there. Um, okay. In fact, give me a resist coercion. Oh no. No matches. You scream. Okay. And after a few moments, um, you do like some like people like are rushing in, um kind of like here as you're sort of like you scream and you're like turning and then sort of coming down the hall um 
first, like, the taller guy with the mustache, and behind him, the handsome guy are sort of moving. And, uh, he's like, he's like, the guy with the mustache is like, Honey, what's wrong? What, what happened? Um, I... When I look back, is the thing still there? No, but there is, like, a bloody, like, handprint. Okay, um, I'll just say, uh... I, I, I think some kids broke the window, and it just scared me. Sorry. Um. Um, coming up behind him, the, the sort of the Etienne says, Damien, is everything all right? And he goes, yeah, no, everything's everything's fine. Um, wait, some, some kids, were they, what, what was that? Were they trying to freak you out or something? Oh, no, I, I didn't, um, I, I didn't get a good look. I was just, uh, you know, sitting I, here. I don't think the window's broken, though. I think everything's okay. Oh, good. oh, do they, do they, what is this? Did they throw dog shit at the window? I didn't see. Oh. I just heard the noise and scream. Maybe we should get back to the studio. Etienne sort of stands there. Again, the room seems a little brighter with him in it. It's weird. He just says, <laughs> Miss, yes, Miss Raven, please. Let's get you, um, let's get you something to calm you down, eh? Yeah, uh, that, that would be great. Um, they sort of walk you back. Um, they take you to a more of like, not to like that, like not to like the studio room with the, with the boards and like the door into the actual booth. Um, they take you to like a different room, more of like a, like a green room or break room. Um, and, uh, and Damien's kind of like, he, he's Damien staying out there and looking, but he sort of comes in and goes, God, some people just aren't raised right, huh? Mm-mm. Huh. So totally rude. What were you doing out there anyway? Were you snooping? Did you find anything good? No, I wasn't. I was just sitting in the desk, just trying to meditate. That's my new thing now. You meditating meditate. so I don't stab people with corkscrews. Apparently, oh. that's something I'm working through. Oh, please, <laughs> please, honey, don't, don't not be who you are. Okay. What we love about you is that you stab a fucker with a corkscrew. Well, uh... Sometimes there's a time for that, but I'm trying to move beyond that. Um, oh, I see. <sighs> um, I think the boss is freaking out with about me in there. Are you okay? Yeah, I'm totally fine. Okay. Totally fine. I think uh, the, the, glo- the guy was gonna get something to come I don't need any drugs I have I I have I I hope that's not what he was talking about um, um I he, just needed he to he gives you and says well there's there's two ways he'd try to calm you down and they both sound pretty good to me and he he uh, kind of just walks out but at this point Etienne is kind of coming in the room and saying ah, thank you Damien um if you um he has a he has a bottle of whiskey um, he sort of sets that down and says, if you would simply like, um, this is not a particularly good vintage Uh, you know spirit, what, this sounds, this or, um, is great, and she'll would, just unscrew it and take a shot. If you'd rather, and he holds up a pill. Quelude? Um, no, no, this is fine. Thank you, thank you so much. Mm-hmm. Um, this actually helps the voice. Whiskey so, does. Yeah, it relaxes the larynx. She'll take another sip. Mm. <laughs> um, Very well. I feel it working now, and she'll recap it and hand it back. Hmm. Well. Sorry, sorry about that. <laughs> I'm sure you're fine. Miss Raven, no need to apologize if it does appear that there was someone out there. Did you see them? No. Um. There are, um... <laughs> If you did see them, it is all right. Um, Miss Raven, he sort of sits kind of next to you, sort of close, leaning in. He smells fucking amazing, by the way. <laughs> this guy is, his face is stupidly symmetrical. And he's very, he's, his eyes are so blue, mm-hmm. very blonde. And he's just like, but, um, 
Miss Raven. Uh-huh. It is possible that um, certain people might have followed me here, so if anyone is harassing you on my account, this is something I cannot let happen, but if anyone is harassing you for any reason, I cannot allow this. Wait, wait, wait followed you here from, from, from where you where you're from no from not not where i'm from people who um oppose me oppose my oppose my business funding records bringing light to the world bringing love to the world through music he puts like a hand through your hair, you know, kind of does what Luke says. Through art, yes. Through perfect, so you, beautiful art. You, 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 uh, this record that we're, that we're making, it's, it's very important to you that it gets made. Oh, Otherwise yeah. you wouldn't have funded it. Oh, it is, um, I think it could be a unique opportunity for me, yes. Right, and yes, and it's something, it's something that's that's unique that 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 is uniquely able to bring light to the world. Is that, is that right? A different kind of light, but yes, I must say. I mean, he is a <sighs> insufferable man at times, but the composer of this album has a unique talent, does he not? I know you have worked with him many times, and I understand this was what originally a musical or parts of this were one of his musicals you performed in, is that correct? Do, when I think back, do I recall any musicals or anything that were mentioned in any of the, any of the like lost lore academia stuff? You would or, not, no. I don't think, ah, oh, damn it. Um, I will just nod and say, yeah, <laughs> totally. And I know that he has had his eye on you. And I must tell you, he was wrestling with demons when he was faced with the fact that this should be a solo album as opposed to a concept album featuring all of you performing the story. But your friend uh, B is very... Um, I want you to know that an album of yours... It, your time will come, Miss Raven, don't worry. I, I'm sure it will. Uh, the, the story, the... What, what, is, what is your your idea of the concept... For the story, what? Well, you'd have to talk to your composer about that. My understanding is it is a tale of love and dread. Lauren made that face, not Medina. Mm. <laughs> okay. Um, dread. Interesting. So, 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 how does? How would? A story that has dread in it bring light to the world. Ah, because they love, Miss Raven. When we love, we fear. Have you ever loved someone? He's very close now. Um, Truly loved someone? I don't think so, no. I find this hard to believe. With the presence you have, the gusto with which you live your life. <laughs> it yeah. strikes me as odd that you have never allowed your feelings to give way to passion. Well, well you know, you can't be a musician without have it, having passion, which, which I have, I have, I have had. But, but going, going back to love and dread, <laughs> specifically, does love is love the cure for dread? Is and she's like sinking more into Medina, admittedly. Sure, 
And he's he's probably like, I'm imagining that like over the course of this scene, here's him and here's her, and it's just slowly like this, you know? Yeah. <laughs> um as he's and he's kind of just like arm around, you know, the back. Probably a fingertip just on a shoulder in a real, you know, whatever way. Um <laughs> And it's the seventies, so it was okay back then. Um but anyway, um <laughs> but he's kind of, you know. Love is not the cure for dread. Love is the reason for living, but dread is what follows. <laughs> every little doubt, every glance the other way, the fear. Will they still love me tomorrow? Wait, is he quoting the song from My World? Will you That's still a good. Love me you could sing me? that to him in response if you wanted to. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> she will say, "Will you still love me tomorrow?" That's. Do you know that song? Of course. How do you know that song? I have heard it play on a on a record on the radio. Uh, I don't know which song it is. The, the actual name. This is me, Lauren, asking. Oh, no. It is, it is Carol King. Will you love me tomorrow? Yes, I believe it is. Um, tonight you're mine completely. You give your love so sweetly. You. Right? Right. But you're, you're, <laughs> holy shit, you're not from paradise, and I knew that before, but you're, you're not from, from here, from here, and she's just, like, just, not, not quite sure how to, like, phrase it. Hmm. Um, I mean, I, I, I am, I'm. I am. I just don't meet a lot of people that aren't from here, and I... <laughs> uh. Would you like to sing that song on your app? Uh, no, because Cover. that's... No, a um... What, what, what would a cover do? Like, is it some kind of... A song cover. You do not know this term. No, I know. I know. I know. No. <laughs> I know what a cover is. I um. But you, you're allowed to. You're allowed to sing songs that aren't from here, and record them here because then that would mean that they exist here. But it wouldn't be under her name. It would be under Raven's or Wendy's name. So would that mean? Um, I speak in the third person as an artistic choice because Wendy is a very complicated being who sometimes well, Etienne needs to step is there's like a, there's of herself. an intense vibe from Etienne, and he uh, quite suddenly grabs you by the throat. And like is like he's like looming over you, almost on top of you, and like Medina, like you cannot breathe, you can't make a noise, and he begins to speak to you in a language you do not understand. But as he speaks, it the inside of his mouth is glowing with holy light. His eyes seem like they're made of fire, and for a moment you think that he has thousands of eyes, these fiery eyes, and he says words you don't understand. Is he still holding my throat? He is. Um, and she try to like grab his hand and pull him off or is she... If you grab his hand and give any resistance, he 
immediately comes back, his face, though still glowing as it seems to, is no longer. He's no longer <laughs> otherworldly like that. But then he says, where are you from? Looks like we both have secrets, huh? You are not Wendy Raven. No. Is she dead? I don't know. I, I don't know a lot about her except that she recorded this album. So. Are you from Malakora? I don't know what that means. Wait. Did you say recorded? Yeah. Your little project was finished. The album was recorded. Yeah. Good. Yeah, and it's now, well, will be under lock and key and magic. So whatever you're doing. Magic, the, the album. Wait, what do you mean? Well, I don't know it is, if is the... it, Does it sell well? Is it is it prominent? Does everyone hear it? I don't think so. But there's one copy that I saw. Very heavily protected. Highly valued. Not widely circulated, I'd guess. Are you going to tell me what... You are doing yes i'm trying to I'm trying to make music miss Ray. why what love love and dread yes what does this album have to do with dread and why is dread such a huge theme in paradise do you know what the dread land is miss Ray? conceptually yes yes there is a certain amount of power in such places, and we must be cautious, lest we get caught within them. Hmm? Okay. It is imperative when we deal in these things. Why do you care so much about dread? Does this lead to the creation of a dread land? Is this what you're telling me? <laughs> I don't know what I should be telling you. Oh. And to be fair, I don't know the answer to that. I see. Without you singing, I am concerned that the album will lack. Without Wendy Raven, that is, if she is not you, I'm concerned that the album will lack the M, the emotion it needs. I need the duet. We did not wish for it to be a story, we wished for it to be rock and roll, as these are popular. But without, without her voice, it doesn't have what it needs, it doesn't have the interplay. It, it, you cannot have love without the woman, you cannot have love without the craving between them. The love of a man and a woman, a man needs a woman, and a woman needs a man. <laughs> There, there are so many problematic things about that, but... I, um, I, he, he actually will play this into whatever. He'll pause and say, ah, obviously that is simply one version, but it is the one that plays best here. You, you are open to other kinds, is this what you say? No... Why are you talking about my sexual proclivity, proclivities when we're, we're, we're talking about dreadlands? Because all this is is sex. What? Love and sex. No, it was love and dread. Uh, love yeah, speak, and sex ha, and dread. Yes. Speaking of, have you ever heard of Voluptua? What is Voluptua? Okay, never mind. It's just... Probably a place you would love. Tell me more. 
sex, I don't know, just people dancing all the time. And she like <laughs> kind of does the she does the the, a bikini the, team the, dancer. The love like, body roll. Just dancing like this all um, the time. That's at this crazy. point, you hear a voice coming from the corridor going, oh my god, she's even dancing for him now. Wendy. Uh, well, we, we got through the song, and then you were screaming a bunch, and everyone freaked out, and I couldn't bear. Just in case they were screams of ecstasy as you found someone to touch you. No, uh, we, he, he, no, he did not touch me at all. I, no. Oh, not him. He was with me when you were screaming. I didn't know who he was. He's talking about earlier when you screamed, Etienne was still back in the studio. Oh, okay. I was thinking he came out and saw them sitting together. Okay, nobody. He he did now, but he's talking about from before. From before. No, he, no, nobody, nobody touched me. Also, I, I, uh, and she'll look at Etienne and say, I, I think we need to stop for the night. I've just got some, uh, stuff I've got to, I've got to work through and process because your lyrics are so deep and I beautiful and, and sexually vibrant that I just. Oh God, I'm glad you got what I was going for. Yeah, I just but... needed to. Dig into that. We gotta get the track, baby. Um, you gotta lay down the track just a little of it. Uh, uh, we gotta sh- get sh- it on the tape. She'll look at Etienne and say, "Well, um, I, I, I don't know. What do you think we might be able to get?" the studio another time when I'm feeling a little more myself yes but I think the composer is right I want to hear you sing One track and then we call it a night. Oh man, but we're no we're so far behind already. But I'm footing the money. One track and then I take you all to a wonderful meal. The Paradise Steakhouse is still open, is it not? <laughs> oh man, I sure could go for some of that steak. It's okay. so late. Will they open? They'll open for me. Oh, man, yeah, that sounds great. I could use... uh, I got a taste of paradise. I'm never going to let it slip away. Okay. Um, You also hear hear the larger guy bring... I I, I could definitely eat if we're... So, Miss Raven. Okay. One song. Sure. Um, I, I just, just giving you all a heads up that, that like I've been saying, my voice is, uh, not, not really, (laughs) it's not really feeling like my own, um, just too many cigs, and she's just gonna shake her head and walk toward the studio, (laughs) like, okay. You go in, and um, they begin playing the song in question. It is a fast-paced, kind of like like 50s rock and roll track to have a moment of weird synergy. It's not entirely dissimilar from what you might hear the power converters playing in all your saloon. It's like it's like a mm-hmm. it's like that like kind of like. 50s inspired retro rock but it's like a you know like real like electric guitar kind of and um as you get the lyrics um to sing uh you also notice that it begins to like play the beginning of this song like the earlier lyrics which i will recite some of now 
Like okay. what? What? And and you hear this voice that's coming out. It's like <laughs> this um this very meatloafian <laughs> voice begins to sing all of this, and it belongs meatloafian. To, yeah, and it belongs to B. He's the he's the singer. His his stage name is Bale. Uh huh. Um, named after like the ancient you know Sumerian or Mesopotamian god. Um, uh-huh. And the lyrics he sings are. When I saw you standing in the glow of the street lamp, I got a feeling that I just couldn't shake. Like the roar of an engine, like the growl of a motor, like the howl of a boy in love. When I saw you standing in the glow of the street lamp, it was almost too much to take. Then the fever found me, then the chills ran through me. You were all that I was thinking of. Your figure is something like I've never seen. Your face is something from an angel's dream. You looked like you smelled of sweet summer cream, and I just couldn't take it. I couldn't take it. I felt my heart explode. I felt my brain recode. I felt the windows of my soul give out. I knew the meaning of dying, knew the texture of crying, knew what living was all about. It's about you, sweet, sweet, heavenly you. And... More verses follow like that, and these sort mm-hmm. of—it's a—it's this—it's this very Wagnerian rock, you know. Very, it, it, you definitely could believe it being in a musical. It's very—it's like sections, you know, almost the way Queen would have these songs with many sections, or and certainly this kind of stuff. But as it's coming to this point, he sings "Sweet, Sweet Heavenly You" one more time. And you understand that it's coming up to the point where you're supposed to sing. Now, you can understand sort of the the. You can understand what you're supposed to be, be singing, and you'd have a guide track in your in your can. You have like you know like big, yeah, these big things. But so Medina, you're listening to this through the cans. You're standing in a, um. It's not like a tiny little booth. It's like it's a big room so that you can kind of belt mm-hmm. a little bit. And you're, you're you're close to the mic. It's got like a big you know wind wind guard on it. It's a, it's hanging down. Um. But as it's as it's playing, you definitely have this weird feeling of like like the music is is shaking you, you know. And she will as much as possible try to like tune in and feel something which she has never felt, but she's Okay, sure. Trying. I love it. Um and you know what? Whatever comes up, comes up. <laughs> you can see them through the glass. You see Etienne sort of standing in the back, watching with great interest. Interest more than that from a from an investor wondering how a product is going. You see the composer just sitting there, like... <sighs> like he has to stare at you but can't bear to look at you you see sort of Bail and, the, and you know like they're hearing what you're sort of hearing and they'll be hearing you too you see that you see Bail kind of just like like uh, kind of grooving he, 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 he's occasionally mouthing the words along with himself as he's singing them like kind of doing one of these you see um, you see Johnny and Damien they're kind of like you know moving slightly and uh, Damien kind of gives you like an encouraging like you got this mm-hmm. but it gets to your part. Uh-huh. Would you like to sing the lyrics attributed to girl? Or not sing, speak, rather. Apologize. I will speak them. Yes. Go for it. So with with feeling, she sings, you want to go to heaven, boy? Ooh, ooh. So you want to go to heaven, boy? Ooh, ooh. So you think that you deserve it. And you think... You've got the nerve to never, ever swerve from the light. The light, the light. Despite, 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 despite the throbbing urge that you feel, you think you can resist me? You've never even kissed me. We've never even broken the seal. You think you can refuse me? You really want to lose me? We've never even broken the seal. Put your hands right here and squeeze, squeeze, squeeze. (laughs) Put your lips right there and please, please, please. Still think you'll go to heaven, boy? Still think you'll go to heaven, boy? You think that you can brave the furious storm? 
Still think you'll go to heaven, boy? Still think you'll go to heaven, boy? Or should we head someplace a zillion times as warm? Uh, I want you and want, and you want me and I want you wanting me. You gotta ring me like a requiem bell. It's time to put up or shut up. And to RSVP, there's a storm in heaven and a party in hell. The angels need a rain check and the devils need a coat check. <laughs> there's a storm in heaven and a party in hell. Now, Medina, uh -huh. you were singing this, and it uh -huh. is not your voice. You are singing these insane words. I don't know what about that makes you feel like it's voluptuan. I don't know what you're talking about. Aside from um, all of it. Uh, <laughs> I was going to say, like, literally the whole thing. <laughs> well, I think um, pretty much the words I said and the way I said them. Yeah, um, but uh, yes, thank you. Lovely, lovely, done. And um, as you sort of as you sort of sing this, you're you're sort of belting this. This person whose body you're in, she is like a whatever. I don't know what kind of music Medina necessarily listens to. You definitely get the impression that like that like this is someone who can can kill it at like defying gravity at her high school. You know, mm -hmm. like this is someone who like like she can she can belt. She can, she can do, and you kind of, you give into it, and you sort of almost let your vocal cords and your, and your body do what it's wanting to naturally do. Um, mm -hmm. Sort of that, that training comes through, and, and as you sort of get to this chorus, I want you and you want me, and I want you wanting me, you gotta ring me like a requiem bell. It's time to put up or shut up into RSVP. There's a storm in heaven and a party in hell. The angels need a rain check and the devils need a coach. check. There's a storm in heaven and a party in hell as you're sort of just like going, you know, so, so intense with this. Um, it is, I would say, you're, you're kind of like, you, you do lose yourself in the music for a few moments. Mm. Um, and when you've sort of gotten to the end of your section, um, if you look back up, Etienne is a, well, I'll do this guy first because I put him on. The composer's just kind of... <sighs> he's just, he's just, he just tells them to shut up and the music stops. And then you hear them in silence as they're just talking. And he's like... Gesturing towards you. And, and Medina, you are not an actor, but for the first time you feel this horrible, just like, like in the moment judgment that actors feel where you're just in there and you do something and then you literally see people and you can't hear them but you see them and like Etienne's kind of just staring and uh, the, the two technicians are kind of going you know they're just doing stuff and you're sort of staying there mm -hmm. but Etienne is staring right at you she'll just and uh, with that um, kind of, you see this guy just, and, and, uh, Damien hits a button and you hear like, it, his voice sort of over the PA and in your, in your earphones. Um, Wendy, that was, yeah, that was great. I think we can, uh, yeah, I think, I think, uh, I think, uh, he's going to mull over whether or not he's going to change anything, but you sounded awesome. Okay. Uh, thanks. It's, it's just so groovy, honey. It's, it's great. <laughs> and, uh. And uh, he's just shaking his head. And uh, if you if you leave the booth and come back in, you hear him saying, "I mean, I feel like we're like we're on a roll now, and you want to stop right? He stop right? He stop right there before we go any further?" And uh, the uh, Etienne is kind of no. I think it is. Um, I think getting that down is important, but perhaps yes, we can. As I said, we can call it the night there. Yeah. Uh, is, <laughs> is anyone else hungry? I'm starving. We should go. Yes, I promised food. Come, we can go. And Bale's like, oh, yeah, sounds great. This guy's like, I mean, the hunger never ends. I, I get it. I just, I could go for a bloody red steak. He'll just kind of, he'll just kind of come and like, uh, 
he'll he'll try to like take you he'll try to like lock arms with you Wendy but if you if you want to pull away from him you certainly can uh no she'll let him cool he'll he'll lead you he'll sort of lead you out Etienne sort of watches you both go um you go out make a luck roll oh no another eight another eight it's pretty good luck okay you kind of head out like the you'll head out the back door mm -hmm. um and he's just kind of like walking with you and going don't hate me I don't think I could bear it if you hate me oh man do you hate I, me I, no. just tell me no you don't good no Oh no. man, you're such a great writer. Those those lyrics, I really felt them emotionally could, in my mind. I could tell, but something was so different. The way you're singing, you're usually so open, and that's a song about a girl who wants the boy to mm -hmm. damn himself to hell just to get inside her. But the way you were singing it, yeah. You weren't like a temptress. You weren't singing it like a Jezebel. You were singing it like a warning. And I don't know if that's good. It might be the best. Because you don't <laughs> want me to go to hell, do you? No. Baby, you don't want me to be trapped, suffering and torment, right? Of course not. No. That's good. <laughs> I don't know what I'd do if I thought, if I thought you wanted that. No, of course not. Um, I also, I was just trying something different, trying to keep it loose, you know? <laughs> Do you ever have a day when you wake up and you can't feel anything? Uh, often, yeah, actually. You guys walking down, like, Paradise Main Street and you stop. There's, like, a little, like, court. The others are sort of a ways back or some are walking past you. But he sort of stops you by this little park where there's a stone statue in the middle of the park of like a like a like town founder type and he just looks at it and goes sometimes I sometimes I'm worried I'm just like a stone statue inside like I can't feel a thing <sighs> oh well, man you know what I mean you ever feel that way? Not you. You don't. Of course you don't. Look at you. You're you're so alive. Even when you're acting so weird tonight, I still love you. It's all for you. We all have times where we feel kind of numb. Mm. I, um... I don't want to feel numb. Meditation helps with that. Meditation. So, uh, At this point, everyone has passed you. They're heading over to a thing up there. To a yeah, we should probably. Uh, we should probably catch up with the others. He sort of looking over your shoulder suddenly tenses. What the hell is that? Oh my god. And he's kind of Can she see what's going on in his glasses? Oh, sick! Yes! Make a look roll. Oh, that's so baller. Actually, yeah. Wait, luck or look? Look. Unless you'd rather do luck. Uh, I already did it. No, no match. Damn it. Make a luck roll as well. We'll give you two <laughs> shots. Six. Very middling. All you see is a shape running towards you, but you can't see who it is. Um, I, I will just, oh God, I don't know. Um, can I, can I like go to run behind the, the guy? Behind the composer? Yeah. Sure. You can sort of, if you're sort of turning, he's, he is like, he's, he's like pulling you. He, he is trying to protect you to some extent. He's sort of pulling you and you see just rushing up towards you wearing a trench coat with like a hat pulled down 
the thing. This monstrous form with like a furry hand, and it sort of looks up at you. Sorry, he doesn't have sunglasses on. But as it looks up with you, you see the face of a humanoid bat. And the composer screams. Make another resist coercion roll. Oh, gosh. No matches. You scream as well. And both of you sort of trip backwards. Oh, this'll be fun. You, um, Medina, you you trip sort of backwards as this thing is rushing. And and this is not in like a, this is not in a, um, this is not in a Sarah Quill, like being on the verge of death. You like fall back and like bonk your head, not like, like not death blow to head. You kind of like hit your head as you're falling back on like the plinth. And what you see above you is like a giant, is that stone statue of like a town founder, you know? Uh-huh. You see this like statue for a moment as like, and like you feel like hands like reaching for you and you feel like, like, like the, the composer also like reaching across you. There's like, as the two of you have kind of tumbled back as this thing is upon you. And for a moment, as you look up at that statue, the statue For a moment, the statue looks like the composer. It looks like this massive form of a of a guy with like weird long hair and a leather jacket with sunglasses on, like mm-hmm. looking down at the at the town. And you all, it almost feels like like the the stone begins to grind and look down at you, just in this sort of strange moment. And you hear his voice saying, "Well, I'll protect you. Don't worry, I'll." I'll protect you, Wendy. Medina, you find yourself back in the reading room. Um, can I, like, am I hurt? Does my head hurt? Your head does hurt, but you're not, um, yeah, and in fact... Remove one power, like, we'll say that, like, like, there was, like, a bit of impact, so you sort of... Um, Is there blood or anything? Is there, do I have leaves or anything on me? No. Nothing like that. Can I check my pockets and see if there's anything, like, on my person or around me? Nothing that she had. No more hoop earrings. Okay, is there a unless, mirror? Unless anywhere? Medina was already wearing hoop earrings, in which case, cool Medina. She was not. Okay. No. <laughs> um, is there, like, a reflective surface? Um, make a luck roll. Oh my god, a horror surge would be so rad now. We just die in here alone and don't tell three. anyone it's three. Uh, there's no reflective surface now. Okay. Uh, I'll feel my face and it feels... It feels more like your face and not her, like... Yeah. Okay. Like, I, I, she was your age and she looked about ten years older because it was the 70s and 80s and all they did was smoke and eat processed food. You know? <laughs> um, yeah. Like, you ever watch an 80s movie and all of the 18-year-olds look 40? Yeah. Um, okay. So, she will... And and the record is still there? Mm-hmm. Has the picture of Wendy changed or anything? Are you scrutinizing it or just glancing? Scrutinizing it. Understood. Um... You look at it, and the photo doesn't really look different, but it feels different. The look on this guy's face, as much as you can see, seems like even more intense and desperate. The look in the handsome man. He's staring right at the camera, and there's this, there's this drive that wasn't there before. There's this, like, that you don't recall from when you looked at it before. This kind of wide-eyed intensity. There's no more smirk. He's now very serious. Wendy's face also looks different. Her expression, that you recall it being more of just a, like, Kind of like 70s, 70s carefree girl, but it looks a little, she looks scared. 
like you do in your student ID. Make a resist coercion roll. You can spend power if you want. Two twos. Two twos. Yes. Um. <sighs> ooh, confrontation and victory. That's a good one for this. You feel yourself being like pulled out of your mind again for a moment. But if you if you wish to, you can like close the liner notes and kind of, you know, just close the whole thing away. Because you feel it like pulling you, but you okay, cool. Yeah. Um Close it. Can I try to get out of the area? Is there like a buzzer or a phone? Sure, if you go to the door, it is locked, but you can like knock on it a little bit. Okay, I will. Mm -hmm. And um, pretty soon the professor sort of unlocks the door, Professor Charles. Um, Oh, yes, um. How, how did it go, Miss Lake? Did you find what you wanted to find? I think so. Yeah. Um, any call from the provost by any chance? No, I was I was actually hoping to receive a call from Pring, Pring, Pring. You turn. There's a little table sitting on the little phone, sitting on a a small end table, and you kind of looks and picks it up says hello yes yes i was i was hoping to speak to you about of, of course oh, it's for you i will take the phone hello you are the first person i've ever let out even for a little bit Out. Yes. And in and <laughs> out and into someone else. She, she says very quietly. So. Mm-hmm. Not sexually, y'all. At all. Okay. Well, I'm back. What else do I do? You really don't understand do you love dread yes well welcome back miss lake what you do now is continue to live in terror you won't be getting another chance to escape Good luck in your exams. Click. She'll shut the, uh, put down the phone and say, well, I guess I'll just have to make the best of my time here, huh? Where is... Did he refer to himself as the soldier of fortune? I think that has probably been... He's. I think he said people call me a soldier of fortune. Where's the soldier? I believe he's still outside of a a whole fast hall. Um, I believe we saw him sitting on a bench with his rabbit. Okay. Well. See you later. And she'll walk by him to go talk to the soldier of fortune. That's where we'll end it then. (laughs) As Professor Charles watches you leave, like, what? So. With that, we come to the end of chapter 96. Man, 96. These are really... Oh. Like, oh my gosh, we're almost to 100. Almost to 100, and then, more importantly, we're almost to 104. Like, no. Who cares about 100? It's not a multiple of 13. 100 is just any old number. I... Oh. So, Whatever. yeah, basically the idea was, I mean, I think I think Lauren understood this and Medina did not, that you were not in a dreadland. Yeah. I mean, you were in the sense that you were stuck in like a memory in front of a thing, but you were, 
you were you were somehow in a place that wasn't a dreadland. I I have a theory as to why. Of course, I'll bet you do. Well, thank you all so much for watching. This was a, this was kind of a weird one. I think we we did reveal some lore tonight, but also raised way more questions probably, which is typical. Way howdy. Happens. Um, thank you for reading the weird lyrics from, uh, there's a storm in heaven and a party in hell. I was telling, I told Lauren ahead of time because I sent her those so she didn't have to read those cold. You know, you got to read ads cold, but you don't have to read lyrics cold. Um, but I really, I am so just personally happy with the angels need a rain check and the devils need a coat check. <laughs> there's a storm in heaven and a party in hell. I really think that's funny. Um, and Steinman-esque. So, um... Yeah, thanks for watching. We will be back next week with, I believe, the whole crew as Medina can kind of come and fill people in on what she learned as um, Bradley Stuyvesant continues reading a children's book about the grumpiest witch, the grossest witch, I think it's called, the grossest witch, as, uh, I forget what. Oh, yeah. Oh, I, oh the, 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 uh, the romance novel about par the paradise mm -hmm. romance novel presented by Madame Foreshadows that Everett is reading. And uh, I think Polly was reading a book about, oh, the, the timber out of space, the sort of the, the Lovecraftian, or sorry, love lady in, in this case. Um, so we'll be back with everyone next week to see more. And I'm sure that Medina will share stuff about this. And I'm sure, I'm sure Dan will be very fascinated by everything he, that, that happened tonight. While he's oh, out. yeah. Um, so no, that was, uh, that was great. Um, yeah, thank you so much. Um, of course. But uh, and also thanks to everyone in chat tonight. I was I was very much not uh, typically. You know, we may have more people around and check in chat. Uh, I don't know what 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 kind of activity there was in chat. I mean, I, I saw I saw posts going by. So thanks all for for participating. Uh, I hope you guys enjoyed this uh, solo stuff. Give it up for Lauren. These solo games are hard on the players um, for sure. Um, in um. Uh, Kim's craft subscribed. Oh. However, I do know that she is in a different time zone, so she may not be here. May no uh, longer be. Well, even so, so that's so cool for the subscription. Yes, and Valmar, nineteen ninety three, followed. So thank oh. you so much. Thanks for the follow. Um, and yeah, please follow uh, or or subscribe if you're able to do all that fun stuff. We do we do a lot of games in this channel. We do this on Friday nights. So we'll be back next week with chapter ninety seven. Um, on Sunday, we will be back with. Uh, Mystic Starport. Mystic, it is a Mystic Starport week. Yep, I was pretty sure it was, and then I was like, wait, is it? But then I remembered what we did in the Dragon game, and it was a fun Dragon game last week, let me tell you. But yeah, this Sunday is a is a Mystic Starport. Uh, Lauren might be in that. I haven't even talked to her about it. Guys, I've been so busy with other stuff. Um, I think it will be. Awesome. Um, yeah. Haven't even really been checking with the players at that, uh, but I've checked with a few. Um, but... Uh, um, because... So that's Mystic Starport. It's our Star Wars game. Going to be super fun this coming this coming Sunday, but mm -hmm. on Monday, a new series begins. I am going to now reveal the title of this series. I had not said it last week because I hadn't confirmed it and hadn't talked to all the players who were in it. This one is going to be very different. I don't know that I'm going to say what this game is yet. I may, I don't know. Do you think I should say, explain what it is or should we leave it totally, totally just? Just a general, yeah. I, I think general explanation. Mm, I'm probably going to do a little less than that. But okay. the game on Monday is called Third Times the Charm. And it is a much more lighthearted game than we have had. Um, almost akin to, to the old Wellness Beyond the Witchlight vibe. Um, this one is going to be weird. It's going to be evocative. of. It's going to have some retro elements to it. Um, and, ooh, I'll mention this. We are using, uh, though it is not this genre, we are using an updated version of the Christie system that I built for Murder by Murder. So this is going to be a, um, if you're into things from the 80s and 90s that are not voluptuous sex stuff, but just other <laughs> culture from the 80s and 90s. I don't want to be in it anymore. If it's not in voluptua. It's not yet. If it's, it's not sexy, I don't want any part of it. I think it does. It, it's as sexy as an 80s sitcom or, a, or like a 90s sitcom would be. Because it's a, it's a, guys, it's a sitcom game is what we're doing. I just gave it away. <laughs> we're doing a sitcom game. I've been trying to do this for a long time. So basically, uh, this is a sitcom. It's a situation comedy. 
uh, and it is uh, it's like an eighties nineties multicam thing. Obviously, we well, we are in multicams in the sense that everyone's in different windows. It's called Third Times the Charm. It's uh, it's um. It's 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 real. I you don't you don't even know how dumb it is. I cannot even tell. I'm very like, excited. You but no, like Lauren, you're you're gonna be in it sometimes. You don't even get how dumb it is. However dumb you think it is, just multiply that by. If you th- it's like it's like was I dumb enough the first time? No, I had to go dumber, and then third times the charm for how dumb it is. That's the that's the idea. Um, so yeah, please check that out on Monday. Um, there is no Gray in the Dark this coming Tuesday. We had that last week, and that was a huge episode, which I'm not sure if I mentioned this to you, Lauren. Ne- like, that was very close to genuine player death. I, uh, if they had not succeeded, like, I, I, like, Jeremy had to. I didn't two- know that could happen in that game. It can happen. Honestly. It can happen in any, uh, it can't really happen in the Monday game unless it's a very special episode about drunk driving. But, um, the, it, it could, it can happen in the other games. It's just, it's just rare, but they went into a hard fight, and I made the fight a little too hard, and for, I, I keep forgetting, I keep thinking they're higher level than they are, it's on me. But they also, there's six of them, they'd be fine. But some bad rolls were happening, their damage output was low, the fight was going on so long, and we had one down with uh, Jeremy rolling nat one on a death save, so he had two fails. So if he had rolled, like, a, it was a 45% oh. chance he was just dead on his next roll because no one could save him in time. They had to make the difficult choice to try to beat the bad guy because otherwise everyone was going to get hit and probably he would have been dead for sure and Vonda would have been out. It was like, it was intense. So, uh, point being, that was a big one, but then a huge arrival at the end of that has changed everything. That's going to be a big deal for that game. So check that out a week from Tuesday. But on Wednesday, we have a Top Flight West game, the first Top Flight West of the Power Surge era. We have seen what's going on on Formation Nation. V has stepped away from Top Flight West. She can't, she can't work with them anymore. But the Top Flight team, there is no shortage of power surges to investigate, including more on their team. That's right. I am here to confirm that one more player member of Top Flight will be transforming. Oh. Lauren, I'll tell you off the air because it's funny. Yes. Um, but uh, for the rest of you, tune in Wednesday as you see this. The player does not know this yet either. Um, so uh, there's going to be some. It's going to be some fun stuff. They all said they were game for the dice, and the dice have said some funny things. Uh, so um, so check that out on Wednesday. And then yeah, one week from tonight, we are back with with this fun. Also on Thursdays, I have been consistent. Um, I stream on my own channel, Scary Games. That I'm not good at, but it's fun. Your channel's called Scary Games? No. God, it's called The Rose Explodes. Wouldn't that be amazing to have at Scary Games? Oh, oh God. I bet it's already taken. Oh, that's been that's been taken for yeah, for sure. But also that can't be my vibe because sometimes I need to not play scary things. I get it. But you gotta do Minesweeper. We beat Garten of Ban Ban last time, and I'm probably gonna do two and three. And then there's another one that Sophia wants me to try, which is Paul Polly's Playtime or something. Which is also scary and based in a child, like, hellscape. So, Poppy Playtime. I really, when you said Polly's Playtime, because I'm just a child, and then you started talking about children, I was like, I'm being bad. But my, when you said Polly's Playtime, my first thing was just like like a polyamory game. Uh, no. It's like, why does everyone want you to play that? Um, <laughs> so, um, anyway... Guys, thanks for watching. This was a super fun night. I really enjoyed this. Um, thanks for indulging our weird... Um, I don't know if... Uh, I'm sure some people may watch this at some point and and hear all of the Jim Steinman lyric references I put into this tonight just as in terms of things that yeah. the, the, the... Oh, I, I do want to say there were a lot of like, who is this, who is that uh, character. We have started... Well, we, Sophia, because she's incredible and amazing. Um, has started to build a, a Wikipedia for us, so eventually it's a, it's we will a fandom have fandom wiki. Yeah, a fandom wiki. Yeah. So eventually we'll have that filled out. So um, we and we're gonna work on it. Yeah, absolutely. I guess I can. I'll. I'll real quick. I mean, I'm sure people are whatever. Like, I'll real quick. Like, Etienne is a person who's been in Paradise from the beginning. Um, sort of the implication of tonight's game. Not completely sure is that he was up to something and he wound up getting trapped here. Is kind of yeah. what you've what what tonight sort of revealed. He is an angel, but he's a he's a renegade angel who's a jerk, and he's murdered many player characters, and also married some of them. So, but he's also such a wonderful husband. He is, and he is a wonderful <laughs> husband because because, and I cannot stress this enough, my love, Sarah. 
You yes. are an incredible lay. Well, thank you. You taught me everything I know. Yes, I did. <laughs> And so, yeah, now he's married to dear Sarah Quill. Oh, he Sophia is. Sophia hates him so much. That Sophia hates a lot of my, my coolest characters. I will certainly say, of all the characters to hate, oh. Etienne is the right one. Etienne is the, is the only pure villain of the people who Sophia hates. I... Elbrand <laughs> is a hero and a I great guy. Elbrand is such a good guy. Elbrand is a great guy. I don't, like, Etienne, I see why she hates him. Etienne. The Drifter is someone I cannot stand. Oh, the, dri the Drifter is also pretty irritating. Here's the thing. The Drifter is, see, Etienne is like a, Horrible. Etienne is like a bad, like, Etienne is like a, like a tort, like a bad guy. The Drifter is just, like, sucks, but I kind of just think he's funny. And the Soldier of Fortune's, I mean, Soldier of Fortune's a, Soldier of Fortune's I love a murderer, Fortune. but he's a, yeah. Wait, Sophia, you don't hate the Soldier of Fortune, do you? So, so Sophia hates the Soldier of Fortune. Um, I'm not trying to speak for you, Sophia. She's, she, I think she's expressed that she, I think she, she never liked him because he was always trouble. And I think he did. If I correct me if I'm wrong, Sophia, I think part of it is that he led to the death of Rawlings. I believe that was um. part of that you blamed him for Rawlings' death. Also, I think Sophia never saw his solo episode, um, and thus. Thus, kind of a lot of because a, a lot of people did not care for him, and then in a solo episode, people were like, "You know what? I'm okay with this guy." You know what, though, um, Tiffany Stiff loves the Soldier of Fortune. Like, he's so great. She should. She should. He is great. <laughs> She's a little afraid of him, though. But you know what? Yeah. But that's what <laughs> makes it fun. Danger is sexy. Hashtag sexy danger. Hashtag sexy. Hi, I'm Tiffany Stiff, and welcome to my new show, Sexy Danger, where I do <laughs> dangerous things in a sexy way. hot dog costume was so hot. <laughs> I was so hot, it was dangerous. Sexy danger. Um, he called me his little chili dog, which is funny because chili usually means cold. <laughs> but when it's on a hot dog, it's hot. I it was, was a hot dog. chili dog, but like not chili like cold, chili like spicy. You could have called, called me a hot, spicy chili dog. Oh, my God. Um, <laughs> I'm glad well, she survived. I hope I hope she comes back. I love how... Yeah, she, I hope it's not Halloween, but she's she, still wearing Yeah, costumes. the end of that episode was her... No, well, she, she lost them all. She used them as flotations. The end of that episode was she... For some reason, she did a strip tease in the boat as La Trovadora got her to the thing. And La Trovadora was like, you want to make out? And she was like, kind of, but like, I guess not. And she's like, okay, cool. And then she swam naked to shore, and it was just like a shot of her butt running along the beach as the sun rose. Well, yeah, but she would have more costumes. Oh, but, she'll like, find more costumes. Would, yeah. Which is the last time we saw her, she was naked. I have to get Jordy more costumes so I can wear them. <laughs> well, so on that <laughs> note... Weird on that note... Thank you all for watching. We hope you come back, but I understand if you don't after that. Um, until next time, the clock remains at three. Have a dreadful night. Ooh.